disappointing, disappointing in, um, on different levels. But you know, ba basketball is a simple game. You, you, you have to make the shots. You know, you can analyze it until you're paralyzed. This is a, it's a very simple game, it always has been. Um, when you're dealing with, with, with kids uh, like ours, or any coach, those made baskets kind of fuel you um, uh, both ways. You know, they're a little kid today, jumped up and in the shot clock and made a lot of tough shots. I kept them going. But uh, obviously, you know, when you're, <clears throat> you're playing everybody tough and you're not really getting over the hump. Like we play Cincinnati tough. I don't care what the final score was. That was a close game for most of them until right at the end. We play Cincinnati, Connecticut tough. We play SMU tough. Then we come home today and <clears throat> we got off to such a... Uh, uh, poor start shooting the basketball. Um, you know, we, you, gotta, you, you just got to do a better job of uh, get our guys ready to play uh, and, and get over the hump. So, when things are going like this, you, you don't look any further than the head coach. The, everything stops right there. So, I take responsibility for this. I've got to do a better job of getting them ready to play and um, put them in a better position where they can be successful. Questions, please. So how, how do you kind of get over that hump? You look, you look at some of the things you did well against SMU and then maybe not so well today. Well, one of the things that jumped out at, at me, Joseph, is that you know, we're the number one offensive rebounding team in the uh, conference. And the other night we had 23 offensive rebounds. You know, our, the thing we try to do every um, uh, game is um, try to get 50% of our missed shots. And the other night I think we missed 35 might be off one or two. Um, and we had 20, we, we, he missed 20, 35 shots, 37 shots, whatever it was, and you get 23 offensive rebounds. That's energy, man. I mean, that's really, that's unbelievable. Uh, tonight, <clears throat> we missed um, 35 shots, and we had 11 offensive rebounds. So, tells you about, tells you a little bit where our energy level uh, was tonight. But I think when you miss as many open shots as we do in the stretches, uh, and, and the free throw line too. We're struggling from the free throw line, we're struggling from the field. Um, and then, you know, the other team starts feeling like they can win. And um, they got good players. It doesn't matter how many you have. I mean, we had seven players last year, won four in a row, so the number's a little bit overrated. Uh, the players they have are good players. I mean, Murray Kitt's a good player, the bigs are, the bigs are pretty good. Uh, Nunez, good player. Um, we just didn't compete as hard as I, I'd like to see us compete. Um, and that's, that starts with the head coach. Kelvin, can part of that, you talk about the not competing as hard as you wanted, can part of that be, like I said, your last three games were Cincinnati, you kind of SMU, here we come with USF, but you'd already beaten over this year and had the player left behind, another player injured, or sick. Can that part be part of the issue that USF, we, we probably have us, and then it took a walk to kick in? Just yeah, I, I don't know. That just, sounds, that just sounds like you're giving us an excuse. You know, I'm not big on excuses. You know, you only get to play 30 of these games. And, and individually, they're all important. So, you know, I'm, I'm not into excuses. You know, we, we had a uh, scout report. We, um, we talked about how our, our game plan, how we wanted to play. Um, but everything starts with effort. Effort, your energy, enthusiasm. Um, you know, we've had some great games this year. Um, but every game by itself is no different than the, the, the previous one or the next one. And we didn't, we didn't come out and play this one the right way. And uh, I apologize to our fan base for that, but that's on the head coach. Coach's energy and effort, is that the reason why you played West went to win first half? Yeah, I was just looking for somebody to make an open shot, really. And West has been our best shooter every day in practice. I, I see how hard he works uh, on his own. And sometimes you got to reward a kid. You know, but, um, you know, we were getting open shots. I don't know if Eric, Eric Weary had two. I don't know if anybody's within 10 feet of him either time. Um, but you know, I figured if Wes had those shots, he's a better shooter. So why not put somebody in there that can shoot? Then Wes started doing other things. And, and we told him to drive it. I mean, they don't, when you have seven players as a coach, knowing I've been in that situation before, the thing you're, you worry about more than anything else is foul trouble. So I told our guys to quit shooting threes and drive the ball. Try to get, get to the free throw lines. If we can't get them in foul trouble. Um, problem is we get to the free throw line and we struggle there too. So 
a uh, little bit of a double-edged sword. Of course, speaking of free throws, are you doing anything, or as a team, are you doing anything to improve free throws? How old are you? 22. I'm 60 years old. Let me tell you something about free throw shooting, son. I've been coaching 26 teams. This is the first bad free throw shooting team I've ever had. And I'm not sure I've ever had a team practice and shoot more than this team. How many free throws do you think we shoot a day, Wes? Hundreds. Yeah, so there's not a lot you can do to improve free throw shooting other than practice. Now, if you find something else, Google it. How to improve free throw shooting other than practice? I'd like to know what it is. So you look at, you know, for time you've been Rob, and I don't want to, I know everybody's short, but do you, at some point, do you put a finger on, on what's ailing or, or what's causing some of the... the no, I think in this day and age, um, you know, you can look around the t teams in the country that are struggling for whatever reason, whether it's Duke losing three in a row, Michigan, Michigan State's lost three in a row, or something like that. Um, you don't know what it is. You know, I, I'm, I'm around these kids X amount of time a day, but I don't know what's being said to them, what they're listening to. Um, a lot of times, a lot of times you worry more about kids when they have a little bit of success. You know, um, you know the message, the message uh, is a little bit different maybe from the outside, and they look at things different. But um, you know, I've always been a grinder. You know, we're, we're grinding our way uh, through this. Well, there's not going to be any white towels coming from over here. You know, the answer, the answer to most problems is to work harder and stay together. That's, that's how these things get resolved. It doesn't matter whether you're Duke, um, Oklahoma, Houston, Michigan State. You, you, you have 30 plus games. Unless you're a great team, you're susceptible to some losing streaks. So, um, doesn't matter. <clears throat> losing or winning. I, I don't ever get overly excited about wins, and I, I never get too low after losses. Um, what I try to get our kids to under, understand is let's figure out why we're winning, and then if we're losing, why we're losing. You know, we'll, we'll watch this film. Uh, obviously, I know why we're losing. Uh, it's hard to, sometimes it's, it's hard to uh, explain it where it becomes simple. You know, the simple thing is we're not shooting very good. Um, but, you know, uh, making shots is like a little bit like gas on a lawnmower. You know, that lawnmower won't run unless you put gas in it. Yeah. De defense, defense is usually the more, the more uh, when we were making shots against SMU the other night, our defense was really good. You know, when, when SMU was struggling making shots, uh, their defense work wasn't as good. That's universal. It's not just our team. That's just universal. But uh, we've, we've uh, had games like this. That's two straight Saturdays, though. You know, uh, against Connecticut and against South Florida, where we just didn't make any shots. Wes, what are your thoughts on how you did today, overall? Um, I just, I don't really want to talk about me too much. I just, want to, you know, we didn't really play hard and we lost the game, so we just gotta, like Coach said, watch the film and just work harder in practice, practice our free throws more, and just play harder in the next game because we didn't come out to play. Yeah. What, what about uh, as, as a team then? You guys obviously know and believe you're better than the way y'all played lately to maybe put things together to get back to how y'all start a conference. How do y'all get there? What's the talk in the practice or the locker room to get back to that point? I think we just got to, you know, we always say stay together, but, you know, we just got to get back to that. Um, I'm not sure if there's a specific thing that we have to do. We just got to have trust and faith in each other. Um, and just play a lot harder on the defensive end, I'd say. Yes, he was good. We're, you know, when you're not making shots, you got to find other ways to win. Um, notice where the offensive rebounding uh, comes in. We ain't got no sucking shots. You know, um, our, we were playing the open shots, but we didn't get enough second shots. And then the, um, you know, the free throw line, Kind of buoys you, just kind of keeps you from sinking. You know, just hang in there. You know, they they go to the free throw line and make 26 for 32. Um, show you free throw percentage is usually driven by the people that shoot the most free throws. You know, 
Dwight Howard shooting almost all the free throws instead of James Harden and the Rockets free throw percentage probably wouldn't be very good. James Harden shooting almost all of them, this going to be a high percentage. You know, the guy that's getting the most free throws for us is chicken. You know, consequently, our percentage is where it is. But um, uh, it's, a fair, it's a very fair question to ask about our free throws, by the way. Very fair. We're, we're, not, we're not making free throws. I mean, you should ask about that, but um, I'm not smart enough to come up with any um, miracle cure for it. It's make a chicken better free throws. I'm going to get them to relax more, more repetitions. Anything else? You talked about really even your bench today, obviously. I'm really excited to see that guy that's sitting there. Did you see anything that was encouraging from guys that normally don't see a lot of work on? You know, Bert. Bert's a guy that's a, a good shot blocker. He's very, very athletic. Um, tremendous, tremendous um, uh, quick first jump. I thought he was going to do it. You know, guys like Devontae Pollard, who were play, playing great earlier in the year. Uh, Rob Gray, who was playing great earlier in the year. Uh, you know, we have to have those guys. You know, they're good players. For this team to be a good team, our, our best players have to play good. We don't have that. You know, we don't have nine great players. We don't have nine very good players. You know, we've got some, some good role players, and we've got some guys who are pretty good. The guys that are, are pretty good, um, Trace, if you if you were to trace back whatever teams are struggling right now as a team, uh, you just can trace it back to the, uh, uh, the guys you depend on. And I, and I know they're trying. You know the problem is 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 when you have success. I've seen this with so many kids over the years. You have success. Everybody treats you different. So from a maturity standpoint, you've got to be able to, you've got to be able to block out the noise. It's like white noise. You know, can't, you know, there's a focus factor that comes in this. And understanding uh, how you got to the point where you had a little success, and then don't change. S stay the course. Keep the keep that car right in between the lines. You know, don't don't exit out. Don't take an exit off the off the ramp or off the interstate to for whatever reason. Keep it straight. So um, there's enough. There's enough there that. I still think we have a good team. We are very good today. And I applaud and I congratulate uh, Coach Antigua for what his team accomplished today. And you know, I know that he's, I can't imagine how elated he would be. You know, I, I remember feeling like that last year when we were struggling and had a big road win at Tulane. It's a tremendous feeling. But on the other hand, it's also uh, very disappointing uh, that we didn't do a better job uh, coming out competing hard. But again, that's that's on the coach. Coach got to do better. All right. Well, <laughs>